And once it starts, I'll just start talking then. So okay, this session is now being recorded for your uh, for your future references. Uh, my name is Chetan Singh. Uh, I'm the trainer with SEC Online. Today's session will focus on uh, a couple of aspects. First, which is the most important, is how do we access SEC Online outside the university? So that will be the first, uh, the, um, you know, things to uh, be taken care of. Second would be how you do research on SEC Online. Also, the learnings that we'll talk about how to research on SEC Online. It does not restrict only to SEC Online as a software. It also applies to other legal research softwares. So what we, whatever we learned today, you can apply in other softwares as well. Then the third thing will be specific to SEC Online. What are the features that we have in SEC Online which makes SEC Online more reliable, more accurate, and more comprehensive? So we'll be focusing on that. And then in the uh, then if the time allows, uh, because uh, we are 3.30 already. If the time allows, we will have a session on Hein Online. If not, then we can have a we can have a quick brief about Hein Online and uh, conduct a Hein Online session whenever the time uh, we get uh, with you uh, for the session. The last leg out of uh, after all this is done, we will have a question answer round. Uh, so if you have any question on the topic that is being discussed on the screen. So whatever I'm showing, let's say I'm showing you how to find a rule judgment in a case uh, in the software. If you have a question around that particular point that is overruled, you can raise your hand. We'll call out your name and you can ask the question and we will give you more clarification on it. However, in case uh, the question is not related to the topic that has been uh, dealt, uh, you know, at that point of time, uh, then I would suggest that we can keep the question, uh, you know, Keep it in the virtual parking lot and ask the question uh, in the question answer section. Yeah. So without any further ado, I would start this session. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. I believe my screen is being shared and I'm now moving to a mailbox. So Kapil or Mohit, if you can just confirm yes, it. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Thank you, Mohit. So this is the email that you should be expecting from us. So in order to access SEC online uh, via remotely or outside your university, you need a, a third party who can authenticate your you know, credentials before giving you access to SEC online. And that third party is our uh, you know, collaboration with MyLoft. So we have put all of you, all of your email IDs you have registered on this portal, and you should be expecting uh, email, which I'm sure you must have received by now. You would have received an email from MyLoft, and the email address is very, very important. That is myloft.xyz. Now, because of this extension, it might have happened that you might have deleted this uh, uh, email, or it might have landed into the junk or the spam folder. If that is so, I would request you to please go through all these folders as well and then set it up. Once you get access to this email, it will say whatever that is saying, your name and all stuff. It says set your password. You click on the set password, it will open into a different tab like, just give me a moment, like this. It will open like this. Now, over here, uh, for one thing which is very important is that you need to open this particular tab into a Chrome uh, folder. It will not open on uh, Internet Explorer uh, browser. It will only and only work on the Chrome browser. So once you do that, it'll say select your institute. For now, uh, do not search for Army Institute. Search for SCC Online. So we search for SCC. It'll say SCC Online and click on continue. Now over here, by default, your email address would be mentioned over here, and this space would be blank. So you can type in your password, and whatever that you pass that you type over here on the first time, in the first place, that will be set as your password for the time to come. Obviously, you can reset your password. That is obviously, I'm sure everyone knows how to reset the password by going in and going in the settings. And once you're done with this, you click on sign in. If you're doing it for the first time, you would need to follow all these steps, right? Of uh, you know, putting your password and all this stuff. Next time, it will just ask for your ID and password, whatever that password you set. You just type in, or you say "Remember me." It'll take care of it. And the first time when you come on the screen, it will give you a small, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, error message or a notification on the screen, which will be which will talk like something like it will come in the center of this and which will be like uh, seems like that you have not downloaded the Google Chrome extension. Download from uh, here or add extension from here, so you click on add extension. I'm sure everyone knows how to add extensions from Google Chrome. You can do that. Once you do that, it'll bring you back to this particular screen. And then it's a simple story. Then you go to e-resources, database, and you have these two options, DOAJ and SCC Online. You will click on SCC Online. It'll open SCC Online onto a different tab. You will click on Login, and there you have it. Now, if you would not follow this entire process, if you not follow the process of remote access, and if you're in the university, then you do not need, uh, you know, uh, going through my loft. You can simply open SSC online, on provided that you are connected to the university Wi-Fi. Then it would, the moment you type in SSC online, it will straight away come like this. Okay. So so far we are done with this. If you are accessing remotely, what needs to be done? If you are locally present in the university, then what needs to be done? Once you're here, it'll give you two options, user login and IP login. A user login uh, is not meant for the students because it will ask for ID and password, and you know that is not something how this entire thing has been set up for your university. So the university has taken the IP access, so you have to click on IP login, and over here you will put in your email address. So this is my email address. I can click on login now; it will give me access. But again, the one time, the first time you have to set things up. So even in the IP login for the first time, if you're logging in and you click on login now, it might say the login ID doesn't is not registered. If that error message comes anytime, let me show it to you. If I say this, it's a login ID not registered. So what I need to do is I need to register myself once. So I click on register here. I can put in my ID that I need to do. Need to uh, you know register, furnish my full name. That's my full name, Chetan Singh Gill, and I click on register and login. Once I do this, it's going to ask me if I'm a student, it's going to ask me that, oh, in which year you will graduate. So usually it's three years or five years. Even if you sometimes you want to stay back for another year for whatever reasons, still don't still put the five years from the start date, OK? And uh, otherwise for faculty members, you can skip it off. Right. And if I click on skip, it will just give you access to the portal. The next time you come in over here, you just all you have to do is that you have just click on login and furnish your email address and click on login now. It will just give you access straight away. Now the question that a lot of people would have is that why do we have to register? Why can't you just give a access straight away in the software? Is because your researches are intact. Whatever that you search for, it is still there. So if I show you one example, uh, my my previous searches, whatever that I search in past, like ten searches are available over here. There's a folder option that is there. I can make my folders and I can access my folders anywhere, unless until there is a there's a you know a face given to a you know to a login. We cannot give it to, give it to you. So every time you come back, it'll be starting from the scratch. Okay. So now once you log in, this is a screen which comes in front of you. Now before I get into the uh, the nitty gritties of how to do research and all stuff, I would like to also talk about what is the database that you'll be getting access to. You will get access to the entire Supreme Court of India judgments. You would have access to all the high courts, various tribunals, which tribunals basically means the courts which are specially designated for one kind of cases to deal with one kind of cases, so it can be a consumer court, it can be labor court, it can be a motor accident, uh, you know, um, court, it can be a you know, uh, 365 IPC 365 court, it can be a you know, court uh, decide uh, you know, uh, as a family court which takes your only family matter. So these tribunal court uh, tribunals are specific uh, courts. So those judgments are also available here. Then before independent judgments. Privy Council, Federal Court, lower courts like uh, you know Lahore uh, Court, Upper Burma, Lower Burma, Pepsu, all these courts which were there earlier, Avad, those are available over here. Then you have your circulars, then you have a notification, instructions are available right in it. 
your entire central acts as on date amended, your state acts, then your bills in parliament, your constitution of India, your constitution assembly debates, which is the backbone of the constitution of India, all that all in all comes over here. The secondary material which aids the primary source of law would also be, we get access to that is bills in parliament as passed by one of the house or as introduced in one of the houses. You also get access to a lot of reports of different various commissions, which also includes the one of the most important law commission, uh, uh, commission report that is law commission of India report that is in short is called as law commission report. You'll get access to that. Then it also gives you access to the legal articles, legal articles from 35 Indian plus 15 international journals. And the list is can keep on going on and on. With all with so much of information that being shared. So you can just uh just give me a moment. Yeah, so we can access all of that stuff, but the point is very simple. The point is that we will be accessing all this information, but it has to be simple. Uh, Mohit, can you just take over? I have just someone at the gate. I just have to push that person. Yeah. So I'll just share my screen uh, real quick, students. Just a second. Now, as you can see, uh, this uh, particular dashboard, um, it comprises of three different tiles, as you have already observed. Uh, we can research why different different tiles, as you can already see on your screen. We can also um, search for some documents, browse through the documents with the library sections. So there are two major bifurcations over here. Whenever you are actually trying to find some case laws on uh, whichever topic, or via party name or via citation or via any other method then the research tiles are going to help you a lot but when you're looking for some documents or just wanted to browse some documents then the my library is going to help you so uh in the dashboard we can start off with any of tile which you want let's start with the word search. i think uh, let's not start like this how about uh, you know uh, i ask you for a query you know, and then you let me know how can it can be searched on the software. Can you do that for me? Sure, sir. So I think you can show us the screen. You're showing my screen right now. You can show us the screen. OK, do you want to share your screen or? No, no, you can keep on because I want you to you know, search for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are so many searches, like you said. Uh, mm -hmm. What if I have just a word to start with and this word is a party name? I have uh, just uh, this uh, party name with me that is uh, uh, Subhash Chandra. Subhash Chandra. Yeah, this All is right, a. Any... I don't remember this case name, but this is a. This is about RTI. It's a very. It's a landmark judgment on RTI. It's Subhash Chandra Agarwal case. I have no other information. How can I search with that? Okay, even if you have a partial party name, uh, then what we can do is we can go with find my party name option, right? Okay. So we click on this find my party name, which is over here. And now it will give us two options. Now answering to your question, whenever you have a partial information of a party name, just like Subhash Chandra, just like um, any other party name, you can come to this particular tile. You click on the okay. code first of all. If you do not have the information that from which particular code that judgment for delivered, do not worry, you can click on all jurisdiction. If you have the information that it was delivered from Supreme Court or de delivered from I'm any other high court. I'm not sure if it's a Supreme Court or high court. Yeah, no issues. We can mm -hmm. click on all jurisdiction. And okay. now uh, Chetan sir has uh, given me the partial information that the case was about Subhash Chandra. Subhash so Chandra, just, uh, just write Subhash Chandra. There it is, Subhash Chandra Agarwal. There it is. Oh, OK, yeah, the first yeah. one, right? Yeah, we can take that. OK. So now I have, we have uh, clearly noticed that we didn't write the uh, we can say respondent name or the other party name. So we can still click on the find case. Our software will give you some suggestions and based on those suggestions. Now you need to look through oh, that so many in, cases. Yeah. 
now you need to look upon the uh, on the year on which the case was decided if you have the um, can we i think uh, can we just try in that case uh, try supreme court because if all duration is giving me so much because sure, this is a landmark okay. judgment has to be from supreme court okay so subhash chandra agarwal from supreme court now oh, and wow. now we have two cases coming in in which year this case was delivered sir any idea i think uh, this case uh, would be the second one i'm not really sure you can open the second one sure no problem i'll select that and click on, click on go so earlier it was showing me 471 because because it was yeah because uh, we have selected all jurisdiction which which and uh, which uh, uh, searches the party name in the supreme court high court privy council in our entire database so that is why okay. even if you have some information regarding the course is going to help you a lot just like it did in our case okay so this is and i believe uh, uh, this is the case because uh, just by looking at the head note uh, on the right hand side i can get to see that the very first act which was discussed in this case that was right to information rti section 6 and section 8 so what is this case about uh, it says rti nothing related to appointment of judges objected by prime minister office issue as to whether respondent applicant has a right to said information Involving issue of freedom of speech and expression of visa vis independence of judiciary and position of justice of India. Oh, so this case is about that you can ask for RTI, but if you're asking for some judges' information, then that is not an RTI. That is not covered in the RTI. Something like that. Yeah, seems to be. Seems to be right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what this is, this head note is going is, to be really helpful whenever you are looking at a judgment. This is this a judgment? No, sir. This is not the judgment. This is the head noting part, which has been made by the editorial team of Eastern Book Company. By reading the whole judgment, they have made some, uh, we can say, short summary for you in the form of head notes, as you can the see. The ratio, the basically ratio or descendi of the case is given. Yeah, uh, accept, absolutely. Okay, okay. So that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. So, and can I take a can I take a print out of this? Yeah, certainly. So, whenever you're working on any judgment or any document, this toolbar will remain constant. Let me zoom on to it. Now, as you can see, this toolbar contains some major functions over here. The first one is a full screen window, as you can see, this small icon. Yeah. And next, we have the speaker icon, which actually allows the uh, machine to, uh, we can say, to uh, read the whole judgment for you. Then we have the save icon. It can be saved in the PDF format in your laptop or computer. It can be emailed as well to any other colleague. And now coming to your question, how can we print? So we hover our mouse to the print icon, and we get two types of printouts. As you can see, the first one is TP, that is a true printout, and the second one is non-true printout. Now, in the print icon, as you can see, there's TP and non-TP. What does that mean? the non true print out is basically the internet download or the website download as you see on your screen right now right this is the website scc online and this is the print out which you are uh, actually seeing on your screen now this website download uh, it can be used for your personal reference but it cannot be used while you are citing this document in the can code you yes. can you show us how it looks like what is a non true print like and what is a true yeah, print like absolutely so we click on this okay <clears throat> it will pop up in a new window so you might want to allow the pop up blockers okay one and time. there you go one time, right yeah one time okay and now as you can see uh, first of all this is coming from scc online website so scc online logo is there printed from mohit singh so your name would be displayed over there and now the print goes like this so it is the same color in the font size which you were seeing on the website before taking the print out and now you can scroll down that's the entire judgment which you're looking at right now you can certainly give a print i can uh, print command from here or you can download it in your machine so what is the true print then if this is the, if this is non true print if it's giving me the print out what does uh, true print does okay so there is a huge difference between a non true print out and a uh, and a uh, true print out uh, the true print out is the exact photocopy of this judgment which we have published in our scc online journals So, so as you all know that saying that you are giving us the book print out the book photo yeah actually okay can you show us so yeah, that actual book print out which is accepted in the course as well yeah mm. can you have a look so at I'm that clicking on the true print out now okay now we select the number of pages i'll just take a few of them 
I think we can't see your screen. I just stuck on true printout. OK, now we can see the pop up window. I think it's going slow at probably at my end or maybe. Yeah, OK, now we can see uh, 496 to 500 pages. Yeah, and you click yeah, on right. print. It's loading uh, the true printout. OK, now we have it. So this is Sorry, the can you see the true printout? This look. This is the same language. Same, everything is same uh, as it was in the non-true printout. What is the difference? Okay, uh, so this is the same color in the font size which we have published in a book, sir. As you can see, first of all, the first authenticity step mark is the SEC online true printout icon over here, right? Mm. Then, when you scroll down, you will actually get to see that this is the actual uh, photocopy of how we have published in our books. And now, when you scroll down. You will also get to see that not only you get the text of the uh, judgment, the head note of the judgment, you also get the placitums, which are going to help you while you're citing any document in the court as well. So what as you can see. This is ABCD. Sorry. ABCD is the yeah. last, right? Yeah, so what you're seeing over here is on the right hand side where my cursor is right now, it is the text of the judgment. And on the left hand side, as you can see, alphabet A, B, C, D, E are going on, right? So hmm. these these are called placitums. This is an international practice of uh, helping the court in such a way. Now, how can you help the court? First of all, whenever you are citing any document, you are not citing the entire document. You are trying to give some information on some particular lines or some particular paragraphs. So, so if I want, uh, can you see this ED written over there? ED, adult remarks. See now what you're doing is, is you're you are looking for it. Yeah. So plastem E. Near oh, plastem e. e. A B C. Okay, sure. There you go. This so this is how you help the court. Yeah. So this is basically this is for the how you cite uh, cases in the court rather than saying, my lord, line number ten or para yeah. two. Yeah. You know, the judges will not uh, would like to count. And now some of you would be thinking that. Oh, we always, whenever we set a you know, summits in the code, we always highlight what we will be talking about. But the problem is that you cannot highlight everything and you, in the anticipation that this would be asked. There will be a lot of time and judges will ask you something which was not expected. Then you cannot yeah. uh, can tell them, sir, give me the paper, I'll highlight it, give it to you, give it back to you. you know? That will not, that not work out. So in that case, what Mohit is saying is that you can say near plastem E, it says, so the Italian mark, see also Constitution of India, Article 19, subpart C, 2, 7. Okay. Absolutely, sir. So, yeah, uh, that is a true printout which is widely accepted in the courts because judges wanted to see the uh, judgment which was published in the book, not the judgment which has been taken from a website, right? So, this is how you can take a true printout and this is how you can cite the document. So that was the um, answer to your question, uh, true printout, sir. And what if I want to see if this case was overruled or not? Ah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, so basically, whenever you wanted to see whether any case has been overruled or not, let me just go back to the home page first of can all. Can I can I see it over here if this case is overruled oh, or not? All right, let, let me go back, go back to that. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So the question case. is, sorry, sir. This is my case. So how can I see if this case is overruled or not? Sure, we can. First of all, we need to open a case. So whenever you are working on any case and you quickly wanted to see whether this case contains any overruled law point or not, first of all, you need to open that case via find by party name or via find by citation. So we have completed our first step. Now we have opened our case. Now please see it over here on the leftmost side. As you can see, the judgment is obviously one, but there were two digest notes made out of this judgment. Now, what are digest notes? So basically, digest notes are handmade notes made by the editorial team of Eastern Book Company, and they represent how many points of law were discussed in this particular judgment. So there were two important points of law that were discussed in the judgment, and for each and every point of law which was discussed, we have made a separate entry with the icon D. So D means a digest note, a point of law which was discussed in that judgment. J means the entire judgment. And again, the third one is also a digest note. Now, whenever you're working on any judgment, what sometimes. Is, what, is two? what is this two number? 
yeah the number 2 means the quorum strength how many judges were there in the quorum and uh, following to that question whenever you are looking at the quorum then you'll see the judge's name over here the justice's name so in this particular judgment justice reddy sir was there and justice nizar sir were there in the quorum however the blue ball highlighted color is on the justice reddy sir name that represents that only justice reddy sir has penned down the judgment was the author of the judgment and justice nizar sir was just having a concurring or dissenting opinion with the fellow judge so that is how you can get to know that who was the actual author of the judgment not about they have concurring or dissenting because if they not given a judgment they cannot have a uh, dissenting opinion <laughs> yeah. they cannot have a dissenting opinion i think uh, he would have given his opinion uh, and justice reddy would have written uh, you know taken his uh, you know suggestion and taken his opinion and would have penned down in his own judgment Absolutely. because if a judgment if a judge uh, if, the, if the lordship has not given a judgment he cannot dissent you cannot have a dissenting opinion at all yeah not the dissenting yeah thank you for correcting all right so now answering to the question that how we can see whether the judgment has overruled or not the very first uh, uh, point is first of all open the judgment as you can see i have rightly opened the judgment and now if you see any red exclamatory mark on the digest notes on the points of law we can't then, see any any red marks yeah so that's the point so if you do not see any red exclamatory mark on any of the digest notes that simply means that this judgment does not contain any overrule point as of now but in case in near future if you see any red exclamatory mark for example if you see it over here then you can click on that particular digest note you can go into the footnotes and it will tell you that where this case has been overruled so right now it has not been overruled anywhere however we can see some important information in the footnotes of a digest note so digest notes are really very helpful can you show us so, uh, one case uh, i know this case of uh, uh, goloknath of the state right. of punjab which was overruled okay sir so i'll go Should back I, to that Should i'll go back again to party name yeah we need to open a particular case so we have to go back to the party name or why find by citation i have the name i don't have the citation so i'll go with this huh all right okay. so golaknath decided by which court sir so i think now i understood so i will take uh, supreme court okay and now i'll just write the word golak that will be good enough golak yeah let's search yeah we can try i think it's a unique name only three results yeah so golaknath versus state of punjab i believe that's yeah. the one that's the one yes go so, judgment is a very important judgment i think this is a very long judgment lengthy judgment as well mm -hmm. so we would have you would have made head notes for even if there's a lengthy judgment of 100 200 400 800 pages as well yes as That's you true. can see i am uh, zooming on my left hand side judgment okay. is obviously one and now answering to your question even if the judgment is lengthy then we have again made the uh, multiple digest notes so Okay. there were 120 important points of law that you should read while reading the um, golaknath case but don't worry we have made separate entry of digest notes for you so whenever you wanted to read any law point just click on that digest note so for example i have clicked on this word uh, this particular law point that's is, that is constitution first fourth and 17th amendments you click on it you can read the whole opinion from the majority side so as you can see as per the majority this was their opinion as per justice hidayatullah sir this was his concurring opinion and as per justice bachawat sir this was his dissenting opinion so this so extra okay. so basically i think for i think a lot of students would not know the meaning of dissenting and concurring i think i'll just uh, i think we should explain it as per majority whatever was whatever was discussed which was commonly discussed which had everyone had a concurrence everyone had a agreement to is is given as as, as per majority and justice hidayatullah rather than agreeing that okay what you said is right he gave his opinion and but he was also agreeing with the majority majority yeah so that is concurrence concurring and dissenting is when someone says that okay what your opinion that you have given on this point of law on the facts that has presented before me i have a different of opinion so that is a dissenting opinion absolutely so that you give that bifurcation over here yes and that this particular information you can see only and only in digest notes because once we read the whole judgment then we get to know that okay justice bachawat sir had his dissenting opinion and this particular opinion was coming from justice hidayatullah sir 
So after reading the whole judgment, then we have made a separate entry of digest notes for you to save your time. Okay. Scrolling down, you will also get the party name as well as the equivalent citations. Like for example, as you can see, this case was reported in Supreme Court reporters. So you have the Supreme Court reporter citation over here as well as the AIR citation. Whichever uh, you wanted to note it down, you can note it down. Mohit how can I see if a judgment is old or not? No. Absolutely. Now go, coming to that question now. Going back to the home screen. <clears throat> OK, now we have opened this case. The answer is very simple. We were trying to look for the red exclamatory mark, right? Yes. So let's scroll down in the digest notes and let's see. Do we that will take a lot of time, sir. 120 uh, points. Keep on scrolling down. Yes, sir. Uh, OK, I have one shortcut for you. So that okay. shortcut is really very helpful. So students, okay. please focus over here. Whenever you wanted to see the overall law points of any judgment, please open that judgment and now go with search within search results on the top left on your screen. OK, right? On see the top you. left on your screen, you see search within search. Type the word overruled over there. Click on the search bar. Whichever point of law has been overruled will come rightly on your screen. So this is the shortcut in the most convenient method which you can see. You are saying again and again that law point is overruled. You're not saying judgment is overruled. Why is that? Sir, because uh, if all the law points of the judgment has been overruled, then we can only say that the judgment has been overruled. But even if some partial points or some of the law points have been overruled in a judgment, then we cannot say that judgment has been overruled. That's not a right statement. OK, so you're saying that when you when someone says the judgment is overruled, it's we have to read the judgment and to find out that if the entire judgment has been overruled or only one or two points have been overruled. Yes, yes, and might be. Uh, Okay, there is a high means. possibility that in most of the judgments, only some partial law points have been overruled. Like in this one, because we had like 120 this. points. Now we are down to only 15 points. And this is a red mark that you're talking about. Yes, this is the one which I was talking about. Let's click on this and let's see what does it has to say. So this particular law point is uh, talking about on the account of Article 368 and preamble. Again, you get the opinion from the minority side as well. You get the party name, you get the bench strength with the judge's name, and in the footnotes, you get to see that it was overruled in case one in the Bharti case, and recently it was overruled in Indian Medical Association versus Union of India. Okay. So, this is so, how you can get to see that where this particular case has been overruled and on which point it was overruled. So, Article 368 and preamble of Golaknath was overruled in case one in the Bharti. Let's see. Do we have any another uh, law point apart from Article 368? So we have this one. That is the Constitution of India, Schedule Seventh, uh, List One, Entry 97. This particular law point again, it was overruled in Case One and the Bharat case. So this is how you can uh, jump to any other law point in case you're looking for a specific law point, or if you're looking for all the law points, then that's the method. Go over there, top left, overruled. And you can see all the overall law points. And what if uh, I want to see, you know, so basically now I can see that out of 120, 15 were overruled. So that means 105 points are still, you know, I can are use still it. A good law. Yes. Are still good law. I can still use them. You can still use them. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. Now, Mohit, uh, tell me, tell us one more thing, you know. Uh, now let's suppose this is my important case. That is Golden University State of uh, Punjab. Now I'm reading this case. Now I also want to see, you know, the subsequent cases which are on the same lines, wherein SP Gupta, this uh, Golden case was cited. You see, what I'm trying to do is, Golden the case is the case that is relevant to me. Is the exact uh -huh. point that we were trying to discuss. I've got it. Uh -huh. But now I, because this case is a landmark judgment. Uh -huh. This still gets cited in a lot of courts, in high courts, in uh, Supreme Court and all. And anywhere where this case gets cited, I uh -huh. would like to see all those cases because those cases are relevant to me. So is there anything that you have wherein I can see all the cases where this case got cited? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have the options. Um, students, as you remember the toolbar, the toolbar is constant. So when you see your toolbar, it has uh, various unique functions over here. So we have already covered the print, the email, and the save icon. Now we are moving ahead to the one in which Chetan sir is asking a question: How we can see the uh, similar cases or of uh, the one which are which we are looking at right now, right? So whenever you wanted to see the similar cases, 
Hmm. Please click on this icon that is called the case reference icon. Okay. I'll zoom onto the screen again. Please click on this icon that is called case reference icon. You single click on it and now it will open all those cases in which Golat Nag has been taken as a precedent and all the similar cases will be right in front of you. So Shankar now, as you can was overruled in this in Golat Shankar Prasad was overruled in this, so this is probably not the uh, search I'm looking for. So yeah. this is giving me. Let's take the second one. Yeah, Madhu we'll Lima. select the, another one that is the Madhu Limai, in which, as you can see, it was mention of Golarnath case. Mention of Golarnath, and uh, I can also open the judgments for you, in which you can rightly see that I uh, how. I, I don't know. I think head notes would give me a lot of things. Just click on the fourth oh. one. Sure, sir. Third is the same now. Fourth. And let's see. Okay. This is the case of ESI Corporation versus uh, so and so. True. When you scroll down, you get to see that IC Golaknath mm -hmm. versus State of Punjab, along with several other cases, were clubbed together and impliedly followed. Okay. And there's another case, Sajjan, that is overruled. Sajjan Singh has been overruled in oh, Golaknath. Okay. No, no, no. Sajjan Singh, yeah. Sajjan Singh might have got overruled in. Let's watch. Let's take Kalashwala, the Kalash yeah, sure. one. We click on next highlight. And in this case, Kalash and the Sharma versus State of Rajasthan, Golaknath along with ECIL were referred to. Okay. This is how you can see the treatment. So this way I can see all the cases uh, where an SPR Golaknath was applied, referred, relied on and all stuff. Absolutely. OK, mm, OK, but this is interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is your party name search. Uh, Mohiji, uh, what if I have a citation of uh, some other journal, like say uh, AIR? No problem, sir. So, for an example, I believe uh, we can take the example from this case, Sonu versus State of Haryana, in which we have the citation of AIR 2017 SC 3441. Uh, right? So now the question is how we can open a judgment with a different journal citation number. OK, is that right? Yes, I'll give you a citation. Okay, I understand sure. what you're saying is that you have equivalent citations. Yes, that, yes, that everyone has. But can can I search with these citations? So let me let me check. I'll give you AIR uh, Supreme Court citation. OK, sir. Fine I'll citation. go with find by citation option. Please okay. go ahead. I want AIR, AIR Supreme Court. So you only have SSC over here, na? Yeah. So we have a list of journals, sir. Apart from SSC, as we click on this drop down, you can get yeah. to see that apart from SSC, we have AIR, SC, as you can see over here. We have the Criminal Law Journal, we have the SCR, and we have DLT as well, and different different journal citations are over here. Okay. So first of all, you need to select which journal citation number are you trying to enter. So I by want Chetan, AIR, sir. Supreme Court. Yeah, yes. OK. I click on that one. Now that it has been changed the abbreviation to AIR. OK. Uh, let's take uh, the uh, recent one 2020. And the moment you type the year 2020, it will give you all the matching pages of that particular year volume. Achha. So the first judgment was on page number one, second was on page number 76. Yes, yeah, seems like the first one was lengthy. Let's take the first one. I want the first one actually. All right, we click on the get citation. There you go. So this is B P Gopal Krishnan versus State of Kerala. Oh, yes, yes. And now, is. as you can see, uh, the citation is 2029 SCC 161. In case you want to note down the SCC citations as well. OK, 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 yeah. that is. Okay, ji. Yeah, to chalo, ji. Very simple thing. Okay, you know that you can search with party name and uh, you know search with uh, citation. Uh, this is a research. Can I also find meanings of particular word in this? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Uh, so let me go back to the dashboard. This is the icon through which I can go back. And now you're looking for some uh, meanings of some words, right? Yes. So in order to find the meaning of any legal word in SCC online, we have a separate tile for that. We have a dedicated tile that is called words and phrases. So we click on this tile and now, sir, would you like to give us any input on that? I would ask, I would like to, before you search on this, I would like to ask you this question. What do you mean by the, uh, by this word Banya? Okay, but sorry. 
Baniya, Baniya. Baniya. Ah. What do you mean by the meaning of word uh, word Baniya? Sir, by the pronunciation, I can uh, I can only remember the Baniya cast, which I uh, remember from my days. <laughs> Baniya, Baniya, no, no. So this is this is the fun part. So does this does this give me a uh, like English uh, English dictionary meaning, or does it give me legal dictionary meaning? sir it it gives you the legal dictionary meaning let me tell you it gives you the information coming from two sources okay the first source of information in which is going to give you the information is that in whichever judgment any judge has defined that particular word okay. baniya or uh, xyz any word which you are trying to search right that's one okay. and the second source of information is going to show you is from the walton dictionary of law acha मोहिजी <laughs> 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 Labor. So yeah, I am a, I am a, I am a, uh, I am a farmer. My my background is a farmer, so I know this because in the, when you go to Mandi and all stuff, uh, this is very very common because uh, the top part of when you go for the harvesting time and when you go to you know get the you know that uh, sugarcane uh, harvest, you cut off the top part because that is not considered you know uh, when you. Are converting into sugar and all stuff. Acha, one more thing. Uh, in this, uh, uh, we talk about uh, backward class. Yeah. In legal meaning, it's a different meaning. In the dictionary meaning, it's a different meaning. Can you search with uh, for the word backward class? Sure, sir. This backward one. class. There you go. So this uh, particular definition is coming from, as you can see, this the words backward class. do not mean the same thing as backward caste or backward community yes and then it continues to go yeah, on I think, the can, i think you can leave it to others to read it later on sure absolutely But this is coming from a judgment yeah this is actually coming from a judgment called triloki nath tiku versus state of uh, jammu and kashmir and you have the citations rightly over here okay and this also has a def second definition means such backward class of citizen other than the scheduled caste this is coming from section 2a of national commission of backward classes act Yes. Oh. Now the second source of information is also coming from an act. Mm. So this is a definition. And I can I search for simple words like like anything like uh, bail. It's very very yeah, complex. I think we all understand the meaning of bail. Yes. So in our own language, we have the meaning of bail. But let's see what the legal dictionary has to talk about it. Okay. So again, uh, the meaning of bail is right in front of you. This first paragraph is going from here, and it continues to go on till here. Wow. So this entire paragraph talks about on the account of bail, in which a judge has defined what's the meaning of bail. So that's the another uh, source of information. Now scrolling down, have a look on the fourth paragraph. Now this fourth paragraph starts from here to set a liberty a person. It last till here cases and it has an abbreviation of what now this source of information is coming from the walton dictionary of law so now you can see that we have three sources one in which the judge has defined second the acts and the third is walton dictionary of law so walton uh, walton dictionary of law is uh, like is been has been embedded completely in this yes sir okay acha okay uh Oh, no i have one more query in this uh, can you search for uh, not with standing sorry not with standing okay not it's one word it's one word ah sure not with standing uh, no, no, i can't get a suggestion no, no, just, uh, not with standing anything no. in the no no mohit ji it's just one word search for it Okay, like this. Yeah, no, just no, not with standing. One word. Uh, I I got completely confused, sir. Uh, I'm just typing it again. No, no, no. You type it. You type it rightly. You type it rightly. Just search with it. Mohiji, not with standing. Search. Okay. Um, no results yeah. found, sir. ये कैसे होगा? आप तो कह रहे हो definition है आपके सबकी? 
okay um so is this the word uh, actually appears um, as it is or does it appear in between the words no 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 so i'll tell you what is happening uh, you know notwithstanding is the is the defin is the english meaning of a legal word okay just remove this and just write non non obstance space ob don't have to put hyphen don't have to put hyphen space right. this one the third obstant yeah. yeah the search with it okay <laughs> so this is this is why i wanted to check because a lot of uh, lot of people lot of uh, softwares they don't give a meaning of notwithstanding because notwithstanding is not a legal phrase is not actually a word it's notwithstanding is a definition of non obstant uh, obstante okay so i think you, uh, you have to yeah you have to search with the legal word not with the meaning that is been uh, you know written in the definition absolutely sir मोहित जी ये तो ठीक है आई थिंक वी हैव अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू डू बेसिक सर्चेस व्हाट इफ आई वांट टू फाइंड जजमेंट ऑन अ पर्टिकुलर सेक्शन आई वांट लेट्स से आई वांट टू फाइंड अ जजमेंट ऑन सीआरपीसी सेक्शन 197 श्योर सर वी कैन डू दैट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू गो टू द डैशबोर्ड दिस इज द डैशबोर्ड आई कैन अगेन एंड फॉर दिस स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग फॉर द टाइल दैट इज कॉल्ड फाइंड केस लॉ बाय सेक्शन दिस इज द सेकंड नंबर टाइल इन द रिसर्च रो वी आर क्लिकिंग ऑन दैट and now it is the crpc section 197 uh, if i am correct sir yes yes all right now in this one first of all what you need to do is you just need to write the name of the act not the entire name of the act with the section only the name of the act okay so now we are going with the crpc so we'll type crpc there you go okay. we get the crpc over here criminal yes. procedure code we click on that directory and now we need to click on whichever section we are looking at so in our question we are looking for 197 we'll just scroll down real quick 197 prosecution, prosecution of, judges. of judges and public servants there you go this basically this basically talks about that uh, you know uh, when what is the protection that the uh, the the law has given to the public servants so a lot of time when they are discharging their uh, duties you know uh, they are subject to uh, you know put under scrutiny saying that oh you have done this but this has you can search with it you can search for it hmm. but how does uh, you know the law protects them because if they are doing something and uh, unknowingly they do something wrong uh, whereas it is it was their duty to you know do that as a public responsibility but that has resulted into something wrong then they are protected by 197 so object uh, crpc policy and object underlining provisions for grant of sanction and protection not absolute sanctioning authority must keep in mind the public interest and the interest of the law while deciding the question of grant of sanction so sanction of the prosecution is that's what you're talking about okay so i got the judgment on 197 in front of me yeah you got around 1000 judgments in which yeah. you can uh, quickly select on whichever court from whichever court you wanted the judgments from oh i can also do that can i see only supreme court yeah absolutely so when you're looking on the left hand side you can actually define the category of data which you wanted to see so you have said supreme court so we'll just over our mouse right in front of supreme court only option will appear we click on that and only supreme court will be selected everything else will be deselected oh okay so i can i will get the entire database by default and then i can make the selection like what i need what i don't need yes okay yes. that's that's nice mohit ji there sab sab kuch ho chuka hai aap bataiye kehte hain क्या मुझे अगर तो गूगल में सर्च सब कुछ मिलता करके मेरे को क्या ऐसे मिल सकता है वैसे बिल्कुल सर बिकॉज़ वी हैव अ डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सर्च मेथोडोलॉजी ओवर हियर व्हिच व्हिच इज वे मोर इजी देन गूगल सो लेट मी जस्ट शो यू दैट वी क्लिक ऑन द डैशबोर्ड आइकन सो जस्ट लाइक वी डू आवर सर्चेस ऑन गूगल वी कैन स्टिल डू आवर सर्चेस ऑन एससी ऑनलाइन विद अ मोर यूजर फ्रेंडली अप्रोच पता है मोहित जी आपने बोला गूगल से अच्छी सर्च कर सकते हैं आई हैव अ फ्रेंड हु वर्क्स इन गूगल You know what he calls Google a god search. Are you sure you want to compete against Google? Your software can do better than Google. Uh, sir, in most of the uh, we can say fields, we can work in, uh, we can work on our software. Like for example, uh, in SEC Online, we have a different type of search methodology, which okay. actually doesn't work on Google but on SEC Online and gives you better results than that. So for an example, mm -hmm. 
whenever you are working on google and you wanted to find any information the very first uh, we can say roadblock is that we are actually trying to find some information from the department of law because we are learning the law now google is for everyone whenever you are searching on that particular platform you are going to get a plethora of information coming from different different databases Mm-hmm. So that is the first major uh, roadblock which you need to cross in order to get the authentic information from. But now, isn't that uh, better? Isn't that coming better? to this particular portal? That is, Mochi. But isn't it better that it gives me everything together? Uh, I believe not, sir. Because again, uh, in your uh, we can say profession, first of all, you need to save your time, and secondly, you are looking for some authentic documents and not just some blogs or some X Y Z websites which you can't rely upon in your assignments or in the cases so yeah so it's For not about the, matter, it's not about the number of searches it's about the quality not the quantity absolutely it's about the quality not quantity spot on okay so now when we work on sec online we can still do the searches like we do on google but with a different uh, method altogether okay so for an example um let's take a very basic example if you suggest um let's take an example of latest cases if i wanted to see from supreme court of india um, on the topic of defamation for example Less corruption right now we just talked about the 197 it's about talking about corruption and i know there's a latest judgment on that of this ah, month okay. all uh, right this is march na so i think uh, 3rd of march there was a judgment on corruption so how can i see that latest case on corruption from supreme court of india okay now this is the actual format uh, which most of the students will try to do when they are working on google because yep. whenever you are working on google you need to define each and every parameter from which you like to see the data i will not call all, it how I, i will not call it case i will call it latest judgment matlab uh, i don't yeah. write the to case i'm just saying this is my personal preference yeah latest okay. judgment Thank on you. corruption from supreme court of india this is the most common format which you might be writing on google when working I'll on that i will get the results no i will uh, get the no i will not get the results sorry sir are you saying that if i do this i will not get the search results no i am not saying that that you do not get the results let me click on the research uh, results screen okay. let me show you what type of results do you get when you do the random search just like you do on google okay so right now you are getting 1000 results from our software <laughs> 1000 results are coming from different different categories <laughs> that's not possible 1000 1100 only <laughs> yeah only 1100 and the first most and the all the top most result is an article Okay. latest trend of supreme court decision on motor insurance and uh, i don't think that's relevant to our case uh, again let's click on the second one that looks like a judgment to us yeah let's just try that at 2019 i want the latest one yeah even i wanted to see the latest again it has opened up some it's, random judgment it's giving me articles it's giving me supreme court can i not uh, do the same thing that we showed uh, that only option i can i not say only supreme court you can certainly do that sir but i believe we have made some error while searching on the sec online no we'll let do that me... later but can i just see only supreme court because i want to see latest let me see the latest now in this okay. can you just do only supreme court okay sir so uh, we go into the judgment section as you can see yeah. judgment directory supreme court directory we click on the only and only supreme court will be selected okay it and says now, 19 is the latest judgment No, sir. Day. In order to see the latest uh, judgment, what you can do is you can click on this icon that is okay. called the sort by icon. Right. And now when you click on that, you can see two major options. There are other options as well, but two major options: chronological latest first or the oldest first. Okay. I click on the latest first, and now I hope there will be a latest judgment um, on the account of corruption, which we were looking for. No, no, no. This doesn't have everything. Mohit, आपके ऐसे software में सब कुछ नहीं है, sir. आपका updated software, आपका software updated नहीं है, sir. Let me show you the correct way of searching, sir. Then, just a second. It's showing 19th of January. I remember there's a judgment from March, like last week. I read that judgment. I can also give you a party name. It must be in my diary or somewhere. I would have written that. I had, uh, just a second, sir. We'll we'll pull up that particular judgment as well. Let me just go back and let me just try to hit the search one more time, and we'll see. whether we get the judgment or not okay so we are going back to the word search so this time we are saying 
bye bye to google we are going to give another round with a different approach okay now this time rather than writing the whole query we are going to only focus on the main word or the catch word of the query from this particular statement you might be thinking that what's the main word of this query now the main word is if i say the main word is corruption because the, top, the latest yes, judgment topic, yeah. the topic is corruption but i think for me supreme court is also important latest yeah, is also important yes but you have already realized that we can select the category from the software and you have also seen yes. that we can so, uh, do the sorting as per the latest factor or the oldest one so we so need not to mention all those things while writing down our query mohit ji dikhaiye jaldi dikhaiye ab ab aap kehte hain time waste kar rahe hain aap jo dikhaiye jaldi dikhaiye khatam kariye usko kya kar rahe hain corruption dikhaiye kya kar rahe hain aap log Okay. Uh, you show me the latest judgment of 3rd of march i'll be i'll be happy sure sir just give third me a of second march or so 3rd of march or today is what date 9th of march 9th of march so i think it might be a 6th or 3rd of march 6th or 3rd sure sir sure sir okay 15th. so right now uh, again first of all we need to select the category judgment and the supreme court so supreme court selected and now the yeah. second thing which we need to do is do the sorting as per the latest order in order to sort the data as per the latest order again click on the sort by click on the latest first mm -hmm. and now i hope we'll get to see the case which you are looking for sir is this the one sachin kumar versus delhi mm -hmm. uh, subordinate select dss yes 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 this is the one so DSSSP. just by removing some couple of words from a query we got to see what's the major difference between uh, we can say a format of a google search and a format of a sec online so basically uh, we are saying what we are saying is that you know keep it short and simple keep it less to give have better results absolutely you need not to define all these parameters by searching in the uh, in the software because in this software everything has an option which you can click upon and modify the data so just focus can on the you, main topics can you show us i think we have last uh, couple of 5 minutes i think left can you show us uh, one or two more searches on this words and then we can take something on browse and then we can open the question answer round sure sure and if we get some if you have some time then we can also talk about high online Sure, sir. Sounded more rhyming. If you have more time, we can do high online. Very good. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. What else, uh, Mohiji? Ye ye niche ke options apke not or and uh, near. Okay. Sure, sir. So these are called the boolean words, or we can say the boolean operators through which you can modify the search or you can use the software to its full extent, right? Okay. So, uh. For an example, if you are working on an query which contains multiple keywords or multiple topics in it, like for an example, um, you quickly wanted to uh, get to see the contract law cases in which the contract got void. Just a very basic example, but still it will work. How can you frame your query? That's the first question. And second, the co second question is how can you put the boolean operators in it? Now, first of all, let me frame the query. Okay. contract cases in but mohit ji aapne bataya tha itna kuch likhne ki zarurat nahi hai na to just get to the point you need not to write everything in your query just write just keep it short and simple yeah so is ka bhi aapne bhari ho to contract and void right okay. now you're looking for some cases in which the contract got void right so basically what you're trying to see is that these two words should be talking to each other while we are searching for any particular judgment okay now whenever you want the words to be as close as possible or appear as close as possible in any judgment or in any in one sentence basically yeah in one sentence in short please use near in between n e a r near is the keyword which makes two words to be as close as possible right okay. this is the first boolean uh, operator which is near it is to be used in the capital in the mobile and in the website platform i think uh, we are losing your voice mohit i think we searched and now it will give us a uh, contract and void coming in one line so there we have it contract is uh, patently void survival of the arbitrators arbitration clause independent theek oh, hai 
Okay, so this is okay. But what if I have a I have a legal word which is made of two words? Let's say I am looking for public interest litigation. Will I search public interest litigation just like that, or is there something I need to take care of? Boy, I think uh, we can't hear you. Your mic is muted. Okay, sorry for that. So. <clears throat> Now we'll take your example that is on public interest litigation. So first of all, we'll write public interest litigation. This is what you're looking for, right? Yes. Now, as you can see, public interest litigation are three individual words in the dictionary. However, they're also considered as a legal word in the legal dictionary, right? Yes. Public interest litigation, or we can say PIL. <laughs> now, if you search it like this, then the software will basically do the three searches. First, it will also search for public. It will also search for interest and it will also search for litigation. You do not want all those words to be appear in random sentences or random paragraphs, right? You want them to be searched together as a phrase. So whenever you are working or whenever you are trying to search the word as a phrase, please use double inverted commas. This is an international practice which you can certainly do on other sources as well. So public interest litigation now has been enclosed in double inverted commas, which tells the software that we are looking for a phrase. So basically, culpable homicide, dowry death, motor accident, all these words which are you know, made of two words, mm -hmm. that those quasi contract, all these would be double quotes. Yes, whenever you are working on any phrase, please enclose them in double inverted commas. That's the way to do it. Okay, perfect. And uh, Mohit, uh, I think uh, what is the not feature? Sure, sir. So not feature is also a uh, very helpful. Not feature is actually to be used when you know what can appear in your results and you also know what you, you do, not uh, do not want in your results, right? Basically, let's take an example for that. <clears throat> Just a second. Um, OK, let's take an example of the uh, check dishonor cases. Now we all know the check can be dishonored through various reasons, right? But you do not want to see one particular reason, right? You want to exclude that particular reason from your research. So let me frame a query for you and let me exclude one particular reason by using the Boolean operator. So you're looking for dishonor of check cases. So I'll just type dishonor near check, right? And now you are excluding one particular reason from that. That is, I do not want the check dishonor cases on the account of insufficient funds. So I'll just type insufficient funds because that's the basic uh, functionality whenever the check gets submitted. OK, now as you can see, I have used two different Boolean operators as well. I have also used the double inverted commas. So this can be done. You can use multiple Boolean operators and you can also use the um, double inverted commas while framing framing your query. Now what's going to happen is the software is going to search for these particular cases, but not any of those cases in which the check has been dishonored due to insufficient funds. Let me search on this and let me show you that. Boji, I think uh, we just have. I think we can show one example of the browse, and I think then we can open the question answer round because the time actually has. Though we started a bit late, but I think we have to adhere to the timelines. Yeah, sure, sir. So, so um, we can show one browse uh, feature. Browse is works in the same manner. We'll show you uh, one example. Uh, uh, I think Mohit, we can show uh, this browse judgment by court. I think we can show two examples quickly, and then just going browse judgment by court. Sure. Sir. This will give us the, you know, the if you want to see the judgment date wise, court wise, month wise, year wise, then it will show it to you. Supreme Court, which year to which year, 2021, and then you say March, 5th of March, and it'll show me 5th of March. Ko teen judgments thi. If you click on any of this, it will just appear right next to it. So this is the year wise, uh, date wise uh, format. Mohit, let's go to back to uh, the Boolean. Oh, sorry, uh, the dashboard. Let's take uh, this uh, browse created topics. Sure. I think then we can take the browse ads as well quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take uh, corporate and commercial law. These are different different topics. In corporate and commercial law, there are various uh, topics which will be available to you. Now let's take something which is uh, interesting, which is relevant. 
people can understand. Because we are addressing the first year students, so I don't want to give something uh, which is. What uh, can you take this uh, cryptocurrency? It's a very latest. Yeah. So now on the cryptocurrency, there is no uh, special act which has been made, right? So, but if I click on statutory law, now what's happening in on the cryptocurrency, whatever information that is relevant to cryptocurrency as a topic is given over here. The acts, the section numbers, the case laws, the committee reports, the articles, all that is available over here. And if you can see, this talks about Banking Regulation Act, Section 35A, not the entire act. That means only this act is related to cryptocurrency, not the entire act. Section 35A and 36. There are two acts which are uh, related to cryptocurrency. And if I click on uh, case law, the next entry. Sure. So there are few landmark judgments on uh, cryptocurrency that is available over here, so you don't have to search for it. And let's take the third one, committee reports. Okay, all the committee reports. So basically, whatever information that is relevant to this particular topic would be given to you. Okay, that is browse created topics and i think one last example so that was this we'll go for browse acts and rules and then we can open the question answer round browse acts and rule which will yes give you the answer to you know the you'll give you access to your entire bear act or the constitution of india whatever that you're looking for but right now in this we will take uh, the okay we can take we can take constitution of india Mohit. everyone would have read the constitution of india and let's take article 1 to 51 so in this, what's going to happen is all the judge, all the important judgments which were, uh, which have been now decided on a particular article will also be mentioned over here. Now, if you can see, Moita just went too fast with it. So if you can see, the blue color boxes. Now these blue color boxes are available in the Constitution. Is also available in the Central Acts as well. Now this means on the nature and scope. With, uh, can you just take us back to the top, which is the more interesting ones, the starting ones? Yeah, these ones. Just scroll down. Scroll down. The meaning of uh, equality, uh, secularism, all this uh, protection of diversity. Now, if you want judgments on this, the concept of secularism under Indian constitution. Now, as a topic, you must have read it, but if you want to see how in which judgment, which is that one judgment which is very, very important on this point of law. So there we have it. Freedom and tolerance of religion is a distinct from secular life of the state. If you scroll down further, it says this case is about from Ibrahim Abiram, sorry, Abiram Singh versus CD. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, CD uh, Komachan. Commission. And this is the citation. Now, if I click on the citation, this will open the full judgment here itself. So this way you can see the judgments on individual uh, point of law, which has been discussed in the Constitution or the points that were discussed in the central acts. So this will also uh, be of some help. I think uh, Mohit compendium and all, I think we can leave it right now. Because uh, yes, uh, most of them are the first years, so I think we can do probably in the next session okay. we can make a note of it. But now we can open the question answer round. Uh, if uh, you have any question, please now you can ask. Both I can share my screen. Uh, I think you have to uh, set up for the next meeting. Yeah, sure, sir. So I can take it from here. Oh, okay, sir. I can take Thanks. the questions if they have any. Thank you for sharing the screen and helping us Thanks. understand. So if there are any questions, uh, I would be I can uh, ask now. Ashokji, uh, if there are any question from the audience who are sitting over there, you can uh, let us know. Hello, sir, sir the, the audio. I think the audio would be uh, really uh, loud. Ashokji, please ask the question. Uh, 
uh, is there any question anyone? Uh, Ashokji, you were saying something. I think I couldn't really understand that. Could we, uh, could we try again? Okay, if there is no question, then we can uh, end the session. Otherwise, please. Hello. 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 Ashokji, please say it. Hello. Hello, am I audible, sir? You're audible, please. I can hear you. Can you hear me? There's some again, there's some problem with that uh, audio. Ashokji, if you're not able to hear me, can you hear me on the other screen? Hello? Or what we can do is if there's a question and uh, there's a problem with the audio, you can use the chat option and you can put it over here. Okay, no question from the audience, sir. Okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna leave the email address uh, that uh, students can uh, reach out to us. So one is, oh, uh, sorry, ignore that one. There's a spelling mistake. So this is my email. Uh, this is our uh, training team uh, uh, email address, uh, learning at the rate .com. You can also reach out to us uh, on our toll free number. That is 1-800-258-6310. You can reach out to us on this as well. So Ashokji, uh, I understand that you can't uh, come online because there's some uh, audio uh, constraint over there, audio is a challenge that you're facing. So one thing I would like to uh, mention and put it on the record, uh, there is a high online session which has also been uh, now uh, just due. So we, if we can have a session for the senior batches and we can conduct another uh, you know, session wherein we can talk about the advanced searches and the high online together. So we can do it in the next week or in this week as well. So whatever you think that uh, is relevant or whenever you can do it, we let's do that in that place. So uh, going with the message that you have mentioned that there's no further question. I, uh, behalf on uh, behalf of uh, my team, uh, Mr. Mohit Singh, uh, Kapil Ajpani, and myself, I would like to thank all of you for attending the session. And uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any concern. Right, and hope to see you in person the next time uh, we have the session. With that uh, thought, I would take a leave and uh, to thank you all of you for attending the session. Thank you so much.